Okay, so we did a lab on the effects of changing the tension in a snare drum head because I play the marching snare and I was interested in what happens when we tune the drum. And by tuning the drum, I'm just going to give you a preview. You might not know about drums. This is the view from like the top of the snare. There are little lugs around the sides that you turn. And when you tighten them to the right, it makes the snare head, um, the tension increase in the snare head and it makes, we say it sounds better, but basically the point of this lab is to see like what that means. So yeah, the purpose was to see how we're pushing the lugs, which increase tension um, on the side of the sound characteristics of the drum when you hit it with the drumstick. Uh, and then also we looked to see how hitting the drum from various stick heights affects the sound waves. And then we compared the sound waves from the snare drum to those from a tom drum. And the, a tom drum is basically like, it's a snare drum, but there's nothing on the bottom. On a marching snare, there's another drum head on the bottom, and then snares, and that's why it's called snare. Um, but then toms is open, and the head is made of Teflon in snare drums, and it's made of plastic in the top drums, so they sound a lot different. Oops. Okay. All right, so our hypothesis was that as the tension of the drum head increases, the frequency of the sound will increase, and then the uh, snare drum with no tension on the head will have a sound that's similar to those from the tom drum. So this is what a, a snare drum looks like. And this is the same model as the one that I did, but I didn't bring it in because it weighs a lot. I don't want to carry it up the stairs. And then this is the tom. So the bottom has nothing over it, and the top is a plastic head. And then we also use, these are the snare drum sticks that we use. We use a microphone to read the sound waves coming out when we hit it. Um, and then basically just longer pro. <clears throat> so we didn't have equations or anything, it was kind of just an exploration of what the sound waves look like. So these are the things we graphed, and I'll show you how we got these values, but we graphed amplitude, frequency, and dissipation time versus the number of rotations. And I'll explain those when we graph. So this is our raw data. When we, um, we put the microphone in the center of the drum, hanging over above the drum. And then we, I hit it from, um, a constant stick height, and stick height is basically how high above the drum head you hit the snare. And when you're playing normally, it's usually four to six inches. They measure in inches as America. But um, so this was from four to six <coughs> inches above the head. And this was completely unloosened. So the amplitude of the waves is how high it is um, above the y, the x-axis, so the y value. Yes. You said unloosened, did you mean loosened? Was it totally loose? It was completely loose. Okay, got the it. logs weren't turned at all, so it was barely even on the snare. <clears throat> and the dissipation time is, I we measured it from basically where the, the hit starts to where it looks like the, there's no sound waves at all. So basically when the amplitude goes back to zero, or close to zero, because you know, it never really got back to zero. And then the frequency we got from a different graph. This is the FFT graph, and so it basically graphed all the frequencies that were emitted by the drum and the amplitude, and uh, we just did the frequency of the one with the highest amplitude because that was the most prevalent frequency that was emitted, but there were overtones, too. And this is just our data. That's why I want to talk about that. What we did when we got the frequencies, we noted the notes that went along with it. So basically, um, it went from a really low frequency to a pretty high frequency. So this is our amplitude versus rotations. And there, we um, concluded that there wasn't really a correlation between amplitude and number of rotations. Because if you look at the scale on the side, it really didn't change that much. It looks like it's kind of going down. But we um, did an exploration lab before to see like, when you hit it harder, what happens. And when you hit the snare harder, the amplitude increases. So since we weren't really changing how loud we played the drum, we concluded that amplitude didn't really change. And then frequency versus rotations. We found that there was a strong correlation upwards from the 
when we increase the tension and snare, the frequency increased. And it's kind of level right here and level right here. It actually kind of looks like pH curve, which I thought was funny. But um, the, the sound that was emitted when it was loose, even when we turned it a few times, we went by a quarter of rotation because you can't really, you can't rotate them that much until it cracks. So um, between zero and 0.5 rotations, the frequency didn't change that much, and that's because it was still loose enough that it was kind of like a tom drum. And then when we got up here, it's approaching the frequency that you want it to sound like. So when you're playing the snare, there's kind of a consistent sound that Mr. Williams would be like, oh yeah, that's what it's supposed to sound like. So it's approaching that frequency near the end. And then dissipation versus time. Um, we found that it was kind of an inverse graph because, well, I linearize. We linearize it in the next slide. But basically, as the tension increased, the dissipation time for the sound waves also decreased. And, um, but it was an inverse relationship. So when we graphed one over the dissipation time versus the number of rotations, it was a linear graph. And then we did stick height, a stick height graph. So basically we found the dissipation time per stick height and then graphed that. And the dissipation time increased when um, we increase the stick height to like one inch off the head, two inches, up to 12 inches off the head, which is really hard to do. You never really do that. <laughs> um, but the dissipation time increased. The amplitude didn't change that much because we, once you get up to like five inches, it sounds pretty much the same. But it, since you have to apply more force to the snare drum head in order to get the drum from up here to down here, we found that um, as we had to increase the force, the dissipation time increased. Because there's more energy going to the head, so it vibrated for longer. And then we just, we play the tom drum. You don't really tune tom drums, they kind of just come the sound they're supposed to sound like because they are supposed to emit kind of a note, kind of like a timpani drum. Um, and we found that the dissipation time was three times as much as the unloosened snare, so they're obviously meant to sound much more resonating than a snare drum. That's why snare drums kind of sound like popcorn, that's how you describe them when you say what they sound like, but tom drums, they resonate for a really long time. All right, so, so this area was, you didn't use like a machine to hit the drum, so, Sorry. like if you couldn't like hit it the same way every time, same way we couldn't hit it from like the same height, even though we like tried to do it. Uh, and since when we like, when we rotated the lugs and it made them tighter, like we couldn't, we didn't do them all like exactly the same. We didn't measure them. Yeah. Exactly. And then change the microphone position. Yeah, but then we had to, when we had to tune the drum, we had to remove the microphone from where it was. So it probably wasn't exactly the same spot every time, but pretty close. And then the conclusion was that as tension increased, amplitude didn't change much, but the uh, frequency increased and approach a certain frequency, and dissipation time decreased. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? We have a quiet audience today. Luke, you don't want to ask a question? you want to look into how the amplitude changed as the as it was tight or loose? Well, like what what about it being tight or looser made you think it was going to be louder or something? Well, just when you play it normally, like when it's completely untuned, meaning that the drum head isn't on all the way, it sounds louder when you play it because it resonates for longer, which I guess the brain kind of could use that as a louder sound. And then when it's all the way tightened, it seems like a crisper sound, so I guess it seems like it's not as loud. So I thought that maybe as we um, tune it more, the amplitude would decrease, even though we're playing it the same. But that was just kind of flawed thinking because it's based on how loud you play. And we played it pretty much the same loudness. Any other questions? 
even designed to have like a specific frequency? Do you have like different frequencies that you use, or that would be like you said more like the timpanis? So um, the timpanis are mostly yeah. Timpanis have like distinct notes that you play, but snare drums you only think of them as having like a set note, but it's kind of just a sweet spot. Once you get up to tuning it in a certain way, it sounds. I don't know, it's, it just, they say like it sounds good, like that's what sounds good, but it, it's approaching a certain frequency, but we don't really think about it as a note, it's kind of just, it sounds crisp at that point. <laughs> because once once we tuned it more, there were more fre frequencies that showed up on the FFT graphs, because I think that once you tune it more, it doesn't emit as much of like a note as much as just a lot of different frequencies. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm.